Good late evening, everybody. It's your girl, Rain and Woman. Welcome to another Bubbles Chronicles. And tonight, I'm going to talk to you about getting older, dealing, no, not dealing, loving on our elders. This was inspired today by my aunt, one of my aunts actually. I had to go check on this morning. Thankfully, she lives in my neighborhood. And um, so I'm very grateful for that because it was easy for me to get to her this morning when she called me and she got off the phone in a hurry oh boy anyway so here's something about about life and our our elderly people around us whether they be our parents grandparents aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, um, neighbors, people, age, and it gets scary. It gets scary for them and it can also get scary for us. The reason why it gets scary for them is because it's different. Man, they, um, life seems to even though it's gradual, it doesn't seem gradual when things change. It seems like it's overnight for them. But it was a gradual process. It was a gradual process, just like everything else in life. <laughs> and people don't see themselves getting older no no wait people don't see themselves getting old I'm going to pause uh, quite a bit probably during this recording because I want some things I want some of these statements to just land and connect So I'm going to say that again. People do not see themselves getting old. We do not see ourselves getting old. And no matter the preparations we may have in place, just like with death, you can never really be prepared enough. Now, there are books out there that talk about getting older. We don't read those books. We don't. 
we see people getting older, getting old around us. We don't really see it happening for us. Not like that. So nothing really prepares us. Nothing really prepares you. Even if we did read the books <laughs> on getting old. Even if we do envision ourselves getting old. We still don't really see ourselves getting old. And nothing really can still prepare us for getting old. And it's scary. So why am I talking about this right now? Like really. I'm talking about this because I'm hoping that it'll help us to be more patient with our elderly. because they need us to be patient. You know what, you might even be working with someone on your job or doing business with someone on your job that's elderly. They may not wanna be working anymore, you know, but they have to. Some of them still do want to, but they still don't. They want to, but they still, but, but part of it is because they don't see themselves getting old. And, and some of them just want to, are kind of trying to just stop it, like hoping to stop it, but it's happening. And no matter whether they are family, whether they are our co-workers or people that we do business with, our, our parents, they need us to be patient. I remember hearing a long, long, long time ago. I mean, a long time ago. God. And while I'm sitting up here talking about a long time ago, hell. It was so long, it was so long ago that, <laughs> that were, that's, that's a reminder for me that, hey, you're getting older. I mean, I say getting younger. Sometimes I say getting stronger, but it's really getting older. And, oh, so back to what I was saying. Somebody told me a long time ago, a long, long, long time ago, that we start out in diapers. We come in the world needing diapers. And we more than likely go out the world needing diapers. We come in the world with no teeth, with somebody having to take care of us, things like that. And if we live long enough, we'll probably ret go back to the stages of not having any teeth and needing someone to take care of us. Hmm. A lot happens in our lives, and we do a lot, a lot of things on this journey in between our 
baby pampers to our adult diapers. Hmm. From teething rings to dentures. Hmm. Y'all. It's scary because our elderly have a hard time letting go of their freedom, letting go of their independence, letting go of their responsibility, letting go of always being able to do for others, letting go of being able to make good decisions, letting go of being able to be alone, letting go of being able to be around others, letting go of being able to speak for themselves, letting go, letting go, letting go. <laughs> letting go of those car keys, letting go. Letting go of information that they held on to as sacred and private, but now it has to be shared for awareness or the betterment of others or themselves. Letting go. Letting go of being able to go somewhere alone. Letting go. Letting go of worrying about others and having others to worry about them. Letting go. It's scary for us because just like they don't see it happening to them, we don't see it happening either. You know, we notice a couple of things. By the time we really are aware We look back and say, I didn't see that happening. I didn't, when did it happen? Because it's like you can talk to them one week and everything seemed fine. And then the next week, everything has changed. It can happen just that fast, right before your eyes. All of a sudden, your parents, they don't sound the same, they don't look the same, they don't move the same, they don't act the same, because they're not, they're not. Hmm. So yes, when we start taking notice, our mind goes to different places too. And then we become the worry, <laughs> we became the same worry watch that they were when we were young, 
you know, how your parents worry about you when you go on your first date. We worry about them like that. Like, where are you going? You know how they worried about you when the first time they lent you the car or you got your driver's license. We become the same way. Where are you going? <laughs> you know how they worried about people you hang around with, who's coming around you, who you open the door for. Want to make sure that when you get to first place, you know, you know, you know all the ins and outs and the do's and the don'ts about people coming around you and how to stay safe. And then we end up doing the same thing for them. Like, hey, what they want? Who's calling? Why they call them? New neighbors. What you need done? I'll come do it. Hold up. Who the yard mean? What? Who said this? <laughs> Who you going with? <laughs> when you coming back? <laughs> Let me know when you make it home. <laughs> I mean, y'all, we, we, we become, we, we become them and they become us. <laughs> I'm laughing because it ain't funny, but it's funny, but it ain't funny. It's scary. Because none of us have gone down this road before. You know, our elderly have never been old before. You know? So it's a new journey for them, too. And we've never seen our elderly get, like, we've, we we haven't dealt with them like that before. So it's new for us. God forbid they fall down, break a hip, or break a hand, or start going to the hospital, you know, a little bit more often. And, you know, I mean, God forbid, guys, I mean, you just start going on a little roller coaster rides for real like like however life was before that whatever little whatever things we dealt with before that they all seem small when you start dealing with your elderly <laughs> they seem like minuscule even minuscule So again, they need our patience. We can ask them to be patient with us while we try to get through this process, you know, and adjust and adapt, but they need, and we do need them to be patient. But the older you get, when you like, well, like when you get old though, you ever see, you ever, do you realize, have you noticed that old people don't have much patience? Like, for real. Like, like, no. Like, like, no. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know not one, I have not one patient old person. Patient? Hold on, wait a minute, let me think about that. I don't want none of my folks to say I'm lying. Let me think about that. Okay. Okay, I did just lie. I didn't do it on purpose though, but I did just... I know a couple of patients. Patient, oh, well, hold on. Yeah, I do. I know. I, I have some older family members. Okay. I have some elderly family members that are patient to a degree. I can say that. You know what, though? They're patient for serious stuff. Dang, they are not patient for bullshit. I'm going to be frank. Let me... They're not patient for bullshit. Mm -mm. Zero patience for bullshit. Being too silly and being too goofy. Mm -mm. Zero 
patience. <laughs> mm -mm. Playing too much, like playing too much. Mm -mm. Zero patience. They have the kind of patience of if you really need to talk something through, they can listen. Be a patient because they want to provide a solution and share their wisdom or whatever knowledge or experience they can share. They want to definitely share it because it's like they feel like they got to give it to you while they can. And I can appreciate that. I really can. But just doing some goofy sh thing. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> So we can ask them to be patient and to bear with us, you know, but but really they they really need us to be patient, to increase our patience. So if any of you have older, you have parents, grandparents that are becoming elderly, remember, they need us to be patient. Your parents may need support. If they're helping out or dealing with handling their elderly parents, you know, your grandparents, that they really need you to be patient with them and everything that they have going on and what you have going on because they have to be patient with their parents. Your grandparents, you know, or your, the elderly cousins and great aunts and uncles, you know, and everyone begins to kind of a little bit, if not gradually, you know, consider their own immortality. Patience. I hugged my aunt today when um, I went to go check on her. And um, she started crying. She's like, her daughter, she only has one daughter, and her daughter is out of town. She travels a lot with business. And she's like, I don't like to ask anybody to do anything. And, you know, I want to do everything myself, and I just can't. You know, I, I, I know people have obligations and responsibilities and... Things like that, right? And I don't want to be a bother to no one. And it won't always be like this. And one day I'll be able to drive again. Now when she said the one day I'll be able to drive again, I'm looking at, I'm looking at her from the inside. I'm looking at her kind of side eye. Now where she can see my side eye, because my side eye's on the inside, like, no, you're not going to be driving again. This Cadillac is not, this Cadillac truck is not, mm-mm. 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 Now, of course, I didn't tell her. You know, I didn't tell her that. Saying like, no, you won't be getting behind us. Mm -mm. Patient. 
Patience. 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 So when I hugged her, she started crying and, and stuff. And I'm like, you know, it's okay. Like, this is life, you know, and... I know you feel alone, but you're not alone. I don't know what it is about getting old, though, where people just, they, they, they start to feel alone. Even when, they're, even when they're not alone. I want to say I kind of get it, but I'm not going to lie, don't to really get it. Nah, I don't really get it. See what I mean about being scary and needing patience and not being able to understand or envision. Like I'm right, like right now, like I'm saying, I don't understand not being alone, but feeling alone, but feeling alone. But you know, one thing I'm grateful for, like I'm gonna tell you, I'm grateful. So grateful. Thank you, Father, that you Thank you, Most High. I am so grateful for having the kind of family that we take care of our people. In my family, if a wife gets sick, the husband takes care. If the husband gets sick, the wife takes care. If the parents get sick, the kids take care. If they need help, I mean, like, I have the kind of family. I'm, I'm talking pretty in general on all sides. This is in general. Now, we do have a few strays that, you know, we like that act strayish. But for the most part, on, in, on all sides of my family, we take care of each other. We look out for each other. Like, like right now, you know, I'm getting ready to have my dad. And this is by my stepdad, by the way, actually. Because both of my parents, both of my biological parents are deceased. Um, when I had to, when I had my mother here and I had to look out for my mom and stuff. And it was no problem. It was like, shoot, I'm going to do whatever. Like, I'm going to do whatever. <laughs> but see, my mom had that kind of attitude about me. And her children, about her children. My mom was like that. Like, there was nothing that, y'all, I'm moving around now. So if you hear like a bunch of moving my I am. I am like moving around. I'm trying to get comfortable up under this freaking comforter. I mean, this blanket and, <laughs> and my comforter. <laughs> Mercy. I'm trying to get it right. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We take care of each other like that. 